Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're going to be doing another tech review and this one is very close to my heart. If you follow my channel, if you're on my discord, you probably know the specifications of my computer and what I am currently filming this video on. And if you don't, right now inside this system I have an MSI 2080 Super. Which, as you know, is already outdated, even though the next generation isn't out yet. So what we're going to be talking about from this article is why my video card is soon to be toast. As always, I will share my thoughts. Please feel free to share yours in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to support smaller channels. All right, let's jump right into this. The title of this article from video cards with a Z dot com really says it all. I'm looking at you, the person that sent me this. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080, 168% of RTX 2080 performance. It is a large increase. The GeForce RTX 3080 has been put through a number of CUDA and OpenCL tests with the CompuBench benchmark suite. The GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card has been testing using 456.16 drivers, and OpenCL info page reveals it's a 10 gigabyte variant with 68 compu er, compute units, streaming processors, and 1710 megahertz boost frequency. This is either the Founders Edition model tested by one of the reviewers or a custom variant featuring the same clock speed. The CUDA info page confirms it's a 320 bit memory configuration with 10 gigabyte modules. So down here it just shows what it was using as far as the CompuBench. Now this is where it starts to get interesting. NVIDIA RTX 3080 performance. We've gathered the data for both CUDA and OpenCL tests. The average of both tests, however, is more or less the same. The RTX 3080 has on average 100 and 68% of the RTX 2080 Super. The card I have. 168% of the RTX 2080 Super performance and is 138 to 141% performance of the 2080 Ti. Now, what does that tell you? It tells you a few things. One, the 2080 Super and the 2080 Ti are pretty close when it actually comes to video performance. That's why I saved the almost $700 at the time and got the 2080 Super. I was very fortunate and got my video card for $450. Bucks. So this hit really isn't as bad as it could have been. Now, when you break this down as far as actual numbers, what they tested it off of was uh, level set segmentation, open or ocean surface, Catmull Clark subdivision and body simulation, vertex connection and merging, subsurface scattering, and TLL1 optic view. So that's what they kind of used at least for the CUDA performance. And then for OpenCL, it's basically the same thing ocean surface, Catmull, and body, vertex, subsurface, and TVL1. Now, these are a lot of numbers. And I really don't want to bore you that bad by going through it. I'll link this article in the description below if you want to look through it yourself. But ultimately down here, when you look at, you know, the rule of averages, the 3080 compared to the 2080 Ti, 138 percent. And then the 2080 Super, 160 percent. Now, where is it getting these massive and I mean massive performance increases because when you were looking at the 1080 Ti, which still a lot of people use because there wasn't a huge jump from the 2080. Now we're thinking to get this card. So where did they get this huge improvement? Let's read on. So this right here. And again, I will link this if you want to look at it. This is just a breakdown of the information that we saw above. And here we go. The NVIDIA GFX. GeForce RTX 38 features an 8 nanometer GA102200 GPU with an 8704 CUDA cores. The graphics card is paired with 10 gigabytes of next generation DDR6X memory across 320 bit memory bus. And this card will be available actually to the public September 17th. So we're literally 10 days away from being able to grab this card. If you could find one, they're probably all sold out. Everyone is very excited. So look right here. So on the graph, they took off the 2080 Super. Is this bigger? No, that's the biggest I can make it. 
So the 2080 Ti right here, this uses a 12 nanometer chip. And again, the newer series is all eight nanometer processors. Now, when you look at transistors, okay, we'll start with transistors. When you compare currently the best video card, if you're not including the Titan series on the market, the 2080 Ti, you're getting about 18.6 billion transistors. So on the 3090 and 3080, you're getting 28 billion transistors, 10 billion more. Now that is not the actual most impressive part. So right now, the best CUDA cores you can get on a 2080 Ti is 4352. So that's the CUDA cores that you're going to get, and that is really like the meat and potatoes of the video card and where it's going to get its main video performance. 2080 Ti, 4300. The 3090, now we're talking the big boy, 10,500 CUDA cores. It's almost two and a half times more CUDA cores than the 2080 Ti. And if you compare it to the RTX 3080, it's double. I'm gonna say that again, it's double. So you're, you're, so the 3080 is twice, twice the video performance of a 2080 Ti. Wow, as far as CUDA cores go. That is pretty unbelievable. I mean, it's, you know, I'm gonna wait to see the testers that I really trust on the internet break down these cards and tear them apart. My favorite is Gamers Nexus. I don't know if you follow them, but I will be seeing what they do with these video cards once they get them uh, into, in their hands. Now, I kind of mentioned it in my last video, the big, big slap in the face for them, or the people that own 2080 Ti's, or I guess somebody that paid retail for an MSI 2080 Super, is the price. So right now, new, you can find 2080 Ti's for about a grand. And it's been a grand for a while if you find it on sale. So a thousand bucks for a 2080 Ti. And again, if you go on eBay right now, you can find them for four or five hundred bucks, which is insane thinking that most of these cards aren't even a year old. 3070, which is a better performing card. Five hundred dollars. And the 3080, which is has double the CUDA course, and we just saw the video performance over it, 700 bucks. Dollars. That is pretty unbelievable. So some tests are finally coming out. We're starting to see just how advanced performance wise we are going to get from these new GPUs. Yeah, and I know, I'm one of those people that probably needs to upgrade. Dang it. Better not tell the wife. A uh, couple things that I found on the internet that I thought was kind of interesting too. Check out the size difference. This is the 3090 right here on top, and below it is the RTX 2080 reference. This is a, the bottom, it's a big card. It's a full-size card. This top card right here is a three-slot video card. It is a monster, and they are saying absolutely minimum power requirement from your PSU is 750 watts to take care of this bad boy. That is a massive video card. Massive. Cool stuff. Okay. I know a lot of people have already seen it, but I'm going to close out this video with the side by side video from NVIDIA that broke down the 4K gaming from a 3080 and a 2080 Ti. So you can kind of visually see the difference side by side and jumping in and out. Honestly, both look really good, but if you pay attention, you can notice differences on where the 3080 is a superior video card to the 2080 Ti. If you have not joined the official Action RPG Discord, please do so. We now have over 310 members, great conversations every day, especially around ARPGs. The idea is to have a gaming community that could jump from game to game together, so you never start the server alone. That's all I got. I'm going to let this NVIDIA video take it out, so I hope you all have a good one. Stay home, stay safe. Do not forget to join the official Action RPG Discord. Aaron, out. I thought you would appreciate the sentry I chose.
the great Agadon hunters from the Telos realm. Though long thought to be extinct, created to hunt only the Slayer and his night sentinels during the Unholy Crusades. Some improvements on their design have been made. Enjoy what is undoubtedly my finest work.